Hi, welcome to the video where I'm going to be talking about the value of biodiversity for human beings and the cost that is impacted when we lose it. This is actually useful for the humans and biodiversity series because both of these objectives are going to be addressed. And I think that they are interconnected. That's why I'm doing them together because every time you talk about what you gain, if you, if you don't have it, you automatically would lose that, that benefit. And therefore, as I discuss the, the ecological services, which the biodiversity provides for us, every time I talk about what is good about having it, I will also talk about what is to be lost without it. And however, this is also useful for a playlist on ecosystems biodiversity because it has a similar objective on the impacts of diversity on human beings. So I will include that video uh, there as uh, for that playlist as well. So instead of recording it twice, it will show up on both content assessments. Um, biodiversity is, is very important. We are connected to the food web or our planet. And so we rely directly to, in it. We are part of it. And everything we do to it affects us. It sends cascade effects. Every extinction that we cause, every uh, thing that we pollute, causes an outcome of a loss that comes back and feeds to us. We So ecology is all about these connections. But you may not realize all the different things that the biology does for you, that the world's uh, support systems do for you. So you see in, in these sci-fi movies, they call it life support systems. We are on Spaceship Earth, and that spaceship does so much to keep us alive. And let's talk about what those are. So the first type of ecological service is this idea of provisioning. That means that we get materials from the Earth that helps us survive, right? Material benefits that actually helps us. So that's obvious, like food, right, uh, from the planet. Uh, whether we're hunting or gathering or, or planting in it, we need the biodiversity of the world in order to, to feed ourselves. Uh, if the fisheries of the world were to be gone, thousands and thousands of people that rely on it would not be able to survive. Millions of people in this planet get their protein from the sea. So without it, you wouldn't have that. Without the wood, you wouldn't have the biofuel that we use to actually burn and keep people warm. And you also wouldn't have materials necessary for construction or paper. Uh, without pollinators, right, you wouldn't actually have the ability to uh, have an easy way of planting or doing agriculture, right? Because pollinators do the job for you. Without them, you would lose all of that. You would lose all of the fruits that we eat because it's pollinators that make sure that they, they actually grow uh, as the flowers get fertilized. So they're important. Fresh water. Millions of people in the world are now in a situation of water scarcity where they have to travel far from where they live and water, getting water has become a thing that consumes half their day. They are barely surviving because of the need for water. And it's interesting that, that, tends, that, that the patterns tend to be that it's going to get worse exactly in the places where more and more people are living. We talk about all of this in the natural resources series, by the way. Uh, provisioning is all about getting natural resources. So the play series about that focuses on, on these resources. There's also uh, medicine. Most of the medicine that we actually use comes from natural ecosystems and discovery of chemicals and plants and medicinal properties that actually uh, help us. Without natural systems, we might be losing out on the future of those things. Uh, you might be surprised that even things like defense, national defense, rely on it, right? From uh, literally ecological structures that create barriers against invasion to actually having the um, inception of ideas for technology. Lots of times we inspire our technology based on what life does like sonar, right? Uh, and that is important. We barely have scratched the surface of the variety that exists in the oceans and in forests of the world. God knows what are the, the, the discoveries we're going to be making about how to stop disease from spreading uh, with medicines and how to create new technologies inspired by what life does. And um, there's also uh, the role of energy. Right, because life forms uh, produce photosynthesis, which is what makes the food that keeps us alive. 
So we, we need the ecosystem to keep us going. And that's the most obvious role. But you might not realize there are some other roles, like the regulating role of the ecosystem. Regulating services are the ones that cause benefits by regulating the actual uh, machinery of life, keeping it going. That's what regulation is all about. So not only do we get these resources, we also get the ability to maintain everything that allows life to be possible. Life maintains itself at the ecosystem level. So, for example, air quality, right? Without plants, uh, the air quality would be much worse. Same thing with water quality. Uh, the filtration of water is done by bacteria, plants, algae living in the water. So without their role, water will become more polluted and we will lose even more water than, than before. Uh, water runoff is also controlled by life. The amount of water that flows is affected by the life that takes it. And it's affected by roots of trees that actually keep the soil in place. You take away those trees because of, say, a deforestation of a fire, you open yourself up for an opportunity to have more landslides, more erosion. And with erosion comes deposition. Sediments placed in a place that they weren't supposed to go to. When wolves were taken from the Yellowstone Park and went extinct from the Yellowstone um, centuries ago, it changed the entire ecosystem, even the way the river flows. You put the wolves back, it restored that balance. So life literally controls the flow of water and the rate of erosion and where that the sediments get placed. So when you take uh, life away, you might end up losing the beaches because of all the wave erosion with going rampart without without new sediments being deposited there because it changed things that have, the way they were, they were at it due to that. You uh, plant a dam and now you stop the river flow. You stop the erosion that it used to do. You stop everything that it used to provide, right? So lo losing uh, water or messing with ecosystems can change the way the water flows in this planet and therefore its availability, right, which goes back to provisioning. Climate. Carbon dioxide is trapped by the atmosphere thanks to the effect of plants and algae. Without these photosynthetic life forms, the carbon cycle will be going out of whack and we would have a greenhouse gas even more in the air causing an increase in greenhouse effect in the global warming, which causes another series of problems like more storms, heat, drought, famine, right? So that's all. that also matters. So we need life to actually protect our climate. You'll be able to surprise to find out that uh, rainforests, they produce so much water vapor from transpiration coming from actually the trees that it actually creates a river of vapor water over it which creates an entire uh, climate effect that affects not just the local climate, but the climate across the planet. The distribution of water vapor in our atmosphere has everything to do with the position of the rainforests in our planet. You take them away, it will change the climate throughout the entire planet. Again, pollinators, they have a crucial role in maintaining the diversity of plants. So if you take away the pollinators, the diversity of plants will suffer. Uh, control of disease. That's the one that surprises people too. So biodiversity, maintaining a diverse ecosystem across the world, helps us make sure that pests don't go away from where they are and don't spread all over the planet. And when they do, they actually act like invasive species, which damage the biodiversity even more. So the same thing applies to pathogens. All of the emerging diseases which are causing problems, like in 2020, you had that COVID crisis, where I'm recording the video right now, it's happening. And that's because our contact and destruction of natural ecosystems, putting us in close contact with host species, uh, such as uh, bats and um, monkeys that may have viruses that we don't have the ability to fight. And that's going to keep happening as we keep destroying ecosystems and allowing them to spread all over the world. Uh, the ability of the ecosystem to remove waste. So the pollution that we make, is it, 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 it dissipates throughout the ecosystem, right? So the solution for pollution is dilution, is what they say, right? It will spread out, don't worry. But, but we are living in a spaceship. Eventually, it will get too dirty. Except we have natural filtration systems, like the Everglades the, the, in Florida. The actual rate of water flow and the purity of the water 
all depend on the actual uh, sea, the grass the, that actually grows in the Everglades. You take away that, it will change the flow of the water. It will change the quality of the water. And they, they tried for agricultural purposes uh, to, to shift it to agricultural land. But then they found out that the water wasn't working anymore. And they couldn't support the agriculture because they, they were losing that ability of the ecosystem to purify and maintain the normal flow of water. Right, so you got more salt water intrusion. You get less uh, purification of the water because of the changes that were made. So everything comes with a cost, right? And the uh, regulation effects of the ecosystem are very, very important. Um, this one might surprise you: making you survive disasters. When earthquakes happen, they can lead to landslides, and why, when, uh, when there's a lot of rain and flooding, that could also lead to mudslides, and those kill thousands of people. And guess why they tend to happen more? Because people do deforestation and cut down trees or make a wildfire happen, a human caused wildfire, and it kills a bunch of trees. And now, as soon as it rains or an earthquake happens, you have a landslide or a mudslide killing even more people. But if you had a life, you would have protection against that. Um, the hurricanes, when they hit the shoreline, there's uh, barrier islands, which are produced because mangrove trees grow and actually trap dirt and soil and sand that are carried by ocean currents, creating whole barrier islands near the edge of the continent. You take away those natural ecosystems of grass and mangrove, the barrier islands get eroded away, and the next hurricane that comes or massive storm will actually cause flooding and destruction across the shoreline. But if you protect those ecosystems, you have the protection that the barrier islands gives you, and the storm surge and flooding will be reduced. The global climate change is causing effects throughout our world, and that is be, uh, because we have taken carbon dioxide that used to be trapped in fossil fuels and that were supposed to stay there for millions of years and pumped all of it in the atmosphere all at once. The life forms aren't be able to, to keep up with it. And because of that, now you have other climate effects like uh, more drought, more heat, heat strokes, right, uh, heat waves. You have more uh, bad storms, loss of biodiversity, more diseases spreading because of it. So it's a massive chain effect because we destroyed the quality of life, right? And we affect the ecosystems doing that. So regulation is a very important role that we don't even realize how much we are protected and maintained. So I think of it as we are in a spaceship and there's food in the spaceship, and we use it from the spaceship itself. But the spaceship also has systems to keep the spaceship itself working. And when we hurt the systems, it will hurt the ability of the, of the ecosystem to maintain itself. Which brings me to the idea of support. Supporting systems, uh, or ecological services, are those that maintain everything else. So the regulating effects of the ecosystem are only possible because of the supporting ones. And that's why in this graph right here, they put it in the middle. You wouldn't have any provisioning, any cultural, or any regulating effects without the supporting things. And examples of that are uh, productivity, which is uh, plants doing their job and doing photosynthesis. So if you didn't have that, uh, you wouldn't have the food because the plants aren't doing their job. Uh, without bacteria and decomposers recycling nutrients, the quality of the soil would be compromised, which, of course, would make life not be able to do uh, grow and not be able to regulate or provide. Uh, soil formation also depends on the rate of erosion, which, like we said, depends on life. Uh, water cycle depends on life. Like I said, the plants in, in the can cause transpiration, and animals do the same thing. And we also have production of ox uh, water through cellular respiration. We also have water being used by life forms and regulated in the water flow, everything that I said when I was doing the regulation. Uh, but the water cycle itself, the way the water flows to our planet, has everything to do with life. The cycling of nutrients. Without bacteria, you wouldn't have a nitrogen-rich atmosphere. You wouldn't have the breakdown of organic matter and waste into nitrates and nitrites, which are the actual nutrients that plants need to do their job. And you would have gathering of toxins in the ecosystem without the roles of those organisms. So nutrient cycling is a very important role that they, they also provide. Uh, do you also have the idea of uh, maintaining diversity itself, right? So the life supporting systems are the idea that 
Do you have systems that provide the things we need and then systems that regulate those systems? It's, oh, it's really amazing. It's as if the world as a whole is a machine of life. And at the ecosystem level, that machine takes a lot of effort to maintain, but it does maintain itself unless we destroy its capacity to do so. And then it will start falling apart. All right? So I think of it as like a computer, right? So the computer does its job, and that's the provisioning part. But in order to do its job, it must regulate itself. And that's what the software is for. But you also have the hardware that allows the software to run. Anything that gets damaged makes the whole machine not work. The world is the same way. We get things out of it. But in order to get those things, you have to have regulation. But in order to have regulation, you have to have the supporting systems that allow the diversion to exist in the first place, that allow the cycling to happen in the first place. And so supporting systems are also very crucial. But I did save the best for last, which are the cultural values of ecosystems. You'd be surprised to find out that how much it matters that we have nature. It's like the movie Lorax. Do you want to live in a concrete jungle? Do you want to live with narrow and concrete everywhere and not have the beauty around you? That's why I moved to Colorado so that I can horseback ride and I can enjoy the world around me and go hiking. And whether it's winter or summer, there's a beautiful things to do in nature. And I open my window and I see the beautiful mountain ranges in the forest that I live in around of. I moved here for this. But the more people that move here, like I did, will this still be here? It depends on what we do and how we live, right? But every time I go outside and, and I go hiking, I have this like existential experience where I realize how beautiful it is. And it, it brings me joy, right? It also makes me feel connected, even though I'm small and insignificant compared to that whole nature. It makes me feel connected to it. And then it makes me realize that I make, bring meaning to my life and significance to it. So Native American tribes like built their whole culture around this kind of thing of being connected to the environment and cultures all over the planet value nature in a lot of different ways. And in fact, the ethical values that we have come from uh, this experience that we have with nature. So whether you have existential experiences or spiritual experiences or, or just at the surface level, tourism and recreation, going swimming on a lake or on a beach or going kayaking or, or hiking or horseback riding or hunting, None of these things would be around if it wasn't for the diversity and beauty of life. And life is what makes tourism on the world. Because if you really think about tourism, yes, people go visit cities and stuff. But if they go to places that they think are beautiful, and a lot of the tourism in our planet is centered around experiences connected to nature. We are intrinsically connected to nature because we evolved as part of nature. We evolved to appreciate it. We evolved to like it because if we didn't and destroyed it too much, it would hurt the world in a way that would actually hurt us back. But our system seems to be broken because we're not taking care of that. And the result is that we're going to lose this heritage. We're going to lose the ability to learn from, from nature, right? The educational, spiritual, recreational value of, of that is, in, is amazing. Now, of course, all of these ecological services together also support our economy. Food from fishing to wood to agriculture to clean water to energy sources uh, to uh, the regulating effects that the ecosystem does and the tourism, all of it depends and feeds the way our economy works. So you might like the luxury and you might think this doesn't matter, but everything that we do to hurt the ecosystem will actually be something that we have to pay back later. So you might say, oh, yeah, let's keep burning oil because – it will help. We need it for energy, for the economy. Yeah. But the cost of doing that will be paid back later. It, or, or our children or our children's children when they can't have what we have right now. And we already have less than those that came before us. We are losing our ecological heritage because we are destroying our planet faster than anything ever destroyed it before. The worst extinction in the history of Earth, the Premier Max extinction, caused... Uh, hundreds or thousands of species to go extinct every year until millions of them went extinct and over 90% of life on the planet went extinct because of massive volcanic eruptions and other things that happened during that time. This was before the time of dinosaurs. Life almost didn't make it. That was one of the five great extinctions that happened. But now we are currently living through the sixth one. And 
the rates of current extinctions are far, far worse than this worst extinction that happened during the Permian time. So this, just think about that. We are destroying the world faster than the worst disasters ever did. So we are like a disaster. And actually, looking back in history, billions of years from now, they might talk about humans as the worst disaster that ever happened to the earth. Do we want that to be our legacy or heritage? Or do we want to save what we got and use it sustainably, reduce, reuse, recycle? Do you want to stop trying to live with luxuries we don't need and throwing things out and having more, a lot of trash and pollution? Deforestation, overexploitation of the environment, fragmentation of natural ecosystems, introduction of invasive species, overpopulation, overtaxation of natural ecosystems, right? It's the spreading of toxins and disease. That's all the nasty stuff that we've been doing lately. Yes, there's also a lot of good stuff. There's people out there trying to protect and live better, making choices to use less, to reuse, and to recycle. And, and especially the reduce part. Because we have a footprint, especially in America, that's ridiculous. We destroy the environment 50 times more than other people across the world. We live a life of luxury. But do you really need that luxury? Do you really need to destroy and, and task the ecosystem so much? If you take too many services now, will be there services left later? The thing is that a lot of this takes time for you to see the cost. Just like global warming and climate change. It's happening already, right now. If we turn back the dial and stop the production of greenhouse gases immediately, the, the thermostat is already set. The damage that has already been done, the global warming is already coming. It's going to take a while for the ecosystem to feel the change, If even if we made it right now. But we aren't. It's getting worse and worse. Emissions are increasing as more and more countries want to have the kind of luxury that the first world countries do. And as we continue to overtask the ecosystem, billions of us, pushing 7 billion at the time this video was recorded, we are going to end up losing these ecological services. And more than just food, the regulation, the support, and the cultural value will all be gone if we don't make changes immediately. Biodiversity is important. We need a diversity of ecosystems of the world to make, to make sure that the world can keep providing these things. And within ecosystems, we need to preserve the species so that ecosystems can remain strong by having the variety within them. That's called species diversities, right? Um, and within the species, we have to make sure to not to kill too, too many or cause too many to die, because if they do and they lose their genetic diversity, each species will be less likely to survive. That's right. Biodiversity matters because loss of biodiversity causes a lot higher likelihood of, of losing stability and being less likely to survive when disturbances happen in the future. So that means leads to more extinction, more habitat loss in a cycle that gets worse and worse over time. And before I realize, there might be nothing left to save and we might be living in a Lorax world. We are the top of the food chain. We will not survive this natural disaster. We won't make it because we are the top. So if we destroy the bottom, how are we going to survive? You may have not realized before this video how many things the world provides to you. Nature is too important to be forsaken. It should be a priority. It's more important than the economy. It's more important than jobs. Because right now, we might need these things. But if we think only about jobs and economy right now, we won't have jobs and economy or even lives in the future. And so... Let's think about that and try to bring balance, try to be live sustainably. We talk more about that in the Natural Resources series. Live in a way that we save enough for the future, that we allow Earth to replenish itself and rebuild itself whenever we do damage, and that we take only what we actually need so that we can continue to live in harmony with it and continue to live in an abundance and, and have that existential value and the tourism and the heritage for the future be maintained together with the provisioning and regulating and supporting effects. These are called ecological services. If you want to continue to be serviced, make sure you service nature with your care as well. So more than ever, don't do anything that would not make your mama, Earth, Mother Earth, proud. I'll see you guys in the next video.